Uh, this panel is around checking kiosks. So uh, the utilization of self-service solutions for uh, checking in, we have a couple of different industries that are represented in the panel today. Um, we have HK Patel, who is a member of the board of directors with the Asian Hotel Owners Association. Uh, we have Ray Bono, who is the VP of Client Services from Verdi, as well as Roxanne Favors, who is the Assistant Director of Aviation for the Kansas, um, for, sorry, for the Phoenix uh, Airport. So very nice to uh, have you guys with me, um, kind of go through this. Uh, why don't we start off with a generalized question. Can you guys give me a little background on the self-service solutions that you are currently utilizing and a little history and background. We'll start with you, HK. Sure, thank you, Jeremy. So as an industry, uh, hotel industry, I, we as an association represent 60% of hotels in the nation, Asian American Hotel Owners Association. And right now, we're at the moment, post COVID, every single hotel in our association has a vacancy because of employment issue. And we are trying to utilize self-check-in kiosks to prevent that. Um, so we're looking at different ways to go around. So that's, that's one of the things we're doing for self-check-in. Thank you. How about, how about you, Ray? Yeah, my name is Ray Bono. I work for a company called Verdi, and we actually um, provide solutions for automating and digitizing the check-in and check-out experience for hotels. I've actually been working in uh, technology companies for many years and uh, taken some of those technologies to build these check-in systems and kiosks. So I used to work at a company with biometrics capabilities, trying to leverage the, ID, you know, the identification ID process during that check-in process for uh, you know, visitor management, for business check-ins, and now just focusing in on the, the guest experience at hotels. Uh, good morning, my name is Roxanne Favors. I'm with the uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. And just by way of background for Phoenix Sky Harbor, we're um, one of the large hub airports. We're the largest airport in the state of Arizona. Um, last year, we did a little over 43 million passengers. And as of October, we're at 41 million passengers. So we're uh, looking really close to breaking our high uh, of that. For, for us, we are a two terminal airport with three runways, um, with the distinction of being one of the busiest three runways in the United United States. So our campus is only 3,400 acres. So everything that we do, we have to maximize the space and check-in kiosks uh, we started using primarily on the passenger services. So you would primarily see that um, first it started with more of our international passengers of uh, checking in for common use um, with a two terminal airport, not every airline can bring their technology, their equipment, their setup on an international setup. So that really was our starting point with common use kiosks. And then when we modernized our terminal three, we have uh, seven airlines in that. Again, we have a very um, small footprint. So we went to all common use on that domestic carriers, which was a switch. So, you know, for United and American, I'm sorry, United and Delta and Alaska, they do it in other places at our, at our uh, peer airports in Las Vegas and LA. So it was just a new experience for them at Sky Harbor for that. So that's where we primarily started was on our passenger services. We also use it on um, our customer facing services in our interactive directories, um, really in those maps of how are we telling people where are the amenities, what stores are open, what stores are available on those concourses. So that was really kind of our approach um, in um, the, the, the kiosk for that. We also did deploy it at our Rent-A-Car Center, which is our consolidated Rent-A-Car Center. Maybe I could talk a little bit more about that later. It wasn't um, for check-in. It wasn't as successful as what we've traditionally seen with passengers in our terminals. Great, thank you. Um, so what, what would you guys say is typically the success criteria for implementing a self-service solution? And to extend upon that, how do you guys me measure and uh, evaluate success with regards to these strategies from um, a deployment of a self-service innovation? 
We can start on the other end this time, Roxanne. Certainly. Um, as an airport operator, what we're really looking for is that speed of service for the passenger. Um, they uh, want to be able to get checked in and get to their gate. Um, as a chief revenue officer, I also want them to stop by some of my great restaurant and retail partners to spend some money. Um, from a kiosk perspective, when we are looking at our common use kiosk, we look at the number of transactions. What we're also digging into is which airlines are they are selecting to do their check-in, so the flight operations for that, the number of boarding passes, any interference or friction that we see amongst that. The case study I was talking about earlier with our rent-a-car center, we just didn't see the number of transactions. Um, nobody was using it, really. It was a very low a utility rate that's on there, so we do look at that utility rate for that. Um, we also um, try to gather information, you know, if a particular airline um, for Delta passengers, maybe they're not using it as much because they're doing everything on their mobile application for that. So it gives us some great intel um, regarding that. So then we know how many units of kiosks that we need versus could there be a better utility for that space? How about Ray? Same question. Yeah, so uh, at Verde, we you know focus on that guest experience, trying to get that guest checked in. And so that's obviously the, the primary um, I guess uh, measurement KPI is uh, how many guests are actually using the technology and successfully checking in. We actually monitor the whole flow and, and can get a lot, you know, pretty granular type metrics. But it all starts with the first conversations. What goals are you trying to accomplish? Um, I think there's two primary in hospitality and hotels. It's either improving the guest experience where the guests want to go you know, as quickly as possible straight to their room. Can you offer that um, to that guest um, either on a mobile or a kiosk? So being able to provide that self-service on a mobile, um, take care of the steps of the check-in process prior to arrival helps eliminate some of that, um, that, that, that process once you arrive at the property. Or it's the um, operational side. As HK had mentioned, there's lots of um, uh, labor shortages, labor challenges, trying to automate these processes that we can automate today um, and still pro you know, you know, get, get those complete, but also still offer the, uh, the hospitality side of the business. So checking in is not so hospitable. You know, being able to check an ID, be able to you know, run your credit card, be able to review the terms and conditions and digital signature. You know, we can start to automate that and offload that from the labor. So as a hotel uh, and resorts that we represent the industry itself, uh, like Ray said, it's conveniency. For many of you here, when you travel and when you check into hotels, you don't want to stand there. You've been traveling all day. You, you don't want to stand in the line to be greeted, to get checked in, and just waste your time. You're tired. You want to get to your room. Relax. So kiosks is one of the best ways to go about, or even digital check-in with your phone and send your information to the hotel prior to your arrival so when you arrive, you're ready to be checked in. So the check-in process is seamless, and there are no issues when you come to the hotel and delay in that. And our main objective as a hotel owner is how can we satisfy our customer to the 100% of satisfaction. So that's, that's why we would like to utilize any conveniency as, as possible for them. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, some of the data that we have from kiosk information systems were a manufacturer and developer of self-service solutions. And I think this is probably more specific to the hospitality industry, but a lot of the clients that we work with are interested in freeing up their human capital to provide more soft services. So around the hospitality, you know, welcoming the guests, trying to create that environment of relaxation and uh, comfort and not necessarily the the bureaucratic portion of, of checking into the hotel. So they leave that to the self-service function and it frees up some of their, um, some of their, uh, um, the actual human resources to provide more soft services to their guests. And I, I would guess in like an airport setting, I've noticed this, right? That it, it, it really is around the efficiency. You're able to have one attendant service multiple 
uh, check in um, travelers at the same time, right? So. Absolutely. And, you know, as an airport operator, really, it was our airline partners that were on the forefront of that, of like, how best could they optimize their human capital? So they really did kind of the adoption into the kiosk as an airport operator. And I think all airport operators are looking at that from a space constraints that we have is that we can't just have 27 kiosks for Alaska Airlines out there when really do they really need that many? So I, I think from, from that aspect of it, because that would be frustrating for other passengers, like why can't I use that kiosk because it's proprietary information? So we really want to, as in an airport, it's stressful enough, how can we lower that stress? Because the one area I can't control is getting through security checkpoint, but from there on, you know, people will relax and get ready for the trip, whether business or personal. So we, uh, from that, perspective, right? M mobile has obviously been a very impactful technology into uh, the these industries that we're working with. Um, we often say at Kiosk that, you know, we're, we're not a we're not a competitor against mobile solutions, but more supplementary. And that being that, you know, we can handle use cases that potentially can't be handled from a mobile environment, and whether that's delivering actual physical media or doing credit card payments uh, and those types of things in a more secure way. I'm curious from the panel, how do you guys see the technologies mobile working with other self solutions uh, type, type technology in your individual use cases? And we'll start with you this time, Ray. Yeah, from we, we actually talk about this a lot at, at Verdi. So I think mobile is a very key uh, piece of technology for guests to utilize for the check-in process. Um, it's very hard to get someone to download an app to your mobile device, so it's more on the mobile web uh, experience, but allowing the guests to be able to, like I said, get those, um, those steps completed prior to arrival really speeds up their on-property um, you know, process of check-in. Um, we still require a kiosk, or I think a kiosk still has its place. There's always the issue of getting a key card to a guest. If the guest um, needs to get a key card, they need to interact with a, a system to be able to encode that key and dispense that key. Not all properties have a, a mobile you know, digital key uh, support for their property. So being able to interact with the kiosk, or if you show up as a guest, you didn't do the steps on your mobile, but there's long lines, you might want to actually go off to that kiosk and perform that check-in yourself with a self-service technology. So I believe kiosks are very important there, but mobile's also um, uh, very important for trying to speed up that check-in process when you can do that off-site. So um, with mobile, there are pros with it that they're a convenience factor. But like Ray said, uh, it, keys or even any services that you may need at the hotels, you will need somebody to address those. And kiosk would have more features than your own cell phone. Um, just from personal experience, just last week we were at a resort. Mobile key would not work. I literally got stuck inside the elevator because my mobile key wouldn't work and I could not go up and down because there was no verification. So I had to call the hotel. They came out and opened with a key and to let me on to the, So situations like that, you will need to have somebody at the hotel that can provide physical stuff. And also kiosk wise, there are storage units, uh, portable storage units. So if you need towels, if you need any supplies for your room or any product, food, beverages, whatever, these storage units are loaded with stuff. So if you go to the kiosk and select what you want, one of the storage units will open and you can get those things. So it, it definitely mobile is a uh, very good way to go, but there has to be an integration between the kiosks and the mobile uh, provider for everybody. How about you, Roxanne, within the air, airline or airport? paradigm. Certainly. Um, from an airport operator where we see it is that we're using um, our website as kind of our launching pad for a lot of that information just to what Ray said. Nobody wants to download another app and put that on their phone. So as an airport we drive people to our website. People still like to go to an airport website even if they're trying to figure out their airline that's there. I was just sharing with Neil a few minutes ago. Mobile is good but you still need a kiosk because 
like HK was saying, sometimes there's things that don't go right with your phone, whether it's your phone or their application. And a kiosk will have its own dedicated network. Um, lots of things work off of Wi-Fi. And if you're in an airport, our biggest challenge is have enough Wi-Fi available for everybody that is getting on and off of planes. But those kiosks have a closed network. So we know that those are going to work. Um, and if we can put those kiosks on wheels and we can move them around, we're able to deploy a quick solution to other places quicker than sometimes getting um, the repair onto the onto the Wi-Fi. So I always look at it as a compliment. They may start there, but you may need to use the kiosk to finish those transactions. Great. So that being said, we talked about mobile versus kiosks. What other types of technology are you guys identifying in the trends that you see will impact our self-service use cases going forward? We'll start with you, HK. Mm -hmm. So other technology-wise, um, something I, I will uh, this copied off of airport technology, and Roxanne, you might be familiar with this, is uh, food ordering technology at airports. So I was just uh, coming from Cincinnati Airport yesterday, and I see a robot traveling through terminal with subway and ice cream on it. So you sitting at a terminal, which is, I mean, your gate might be 20 minutes walk from a restaurant, you just scan a barcode, order your food and robot will go get your food from the restaurant so you don't have to go. So something like that, we are adapting into hospitality industry. A Delta hotel in Cincinnati has a robot. So if you were to call a hotel front desk and say, can you send me towels to my room? So they will load it up and inside that robot, they will put in go to room number 12 or whatever. And that robot will travel through elevators onto whatever floor needs to go and go to the room and have a service where the guest will know that robot is at your door and they'll open it and get their product. So, and they're, they're, these are code based so nobody within the uh, hotel, anybody else cannot get into those robots and get those. So that's something new that we're seeing. It's very early phases of that, so we'll have to go through uh, the, the pros and cons of it to implement into the, all the industry itself. Yeah, just personally, I was just at the United Club in Denver, and they, uh, they're employing robots to bus all the tables. So the, uh, they're not delivering food, but you know it's self-service in like a buffet. You get your own uh, snacks and whatnot, but the robots are kind of mulling about cleaning up every after everybody. I thought it was very interesting. Uh, how about you, Ray? What what kind of technology are you seeing that's uh, a trend, um, both from a kind of interesting factor, but also from a convenience and customer experience improvement perspective? So I agree on the robots, but I, I won't go into more details there because HK just covered that. But I think, I think artificial intelligence um, is really growing. Um, everyone's looking at how you take that AI and embedding it into, um, into your business. So for check-in, we're you know, looking at the, the hospitality, right? The guests checking in. So how can we leverage AI to provide a better experience? How can we put AI to help um, uh, increase revenue, right? Revenue generation by maybe offering personalized upsell, personalized packaging to that guest during the check-in process and really using that intelligence baked into the, uh, the process. And so I think that's probably um, the, the, the number one technology that we're looking at now that's really growing. Uh, from an airport, uh, in addition to some of the mobile um, migrations that we're seeing as far as checking in for your flight, your seat, even saying you're going to um, check bags, uh, that was one that even Southwest has moved to testing that off of their application. A uh, big one for airports is biometrics. Somebody mentioned this in the first session, the keynote session this morning. So. The movement of biometrics, we're um, definitely seeing that when it comes to first again, kind of international passengers in which, you know, eyes or fingers gets them through 
all of that. They don't have to pull out their passport. That's all been loaded up, um, which in itself has a lot of uh, concerns from data storage, personal information, and working with the federal government to make sure that we have all of those correct from a cybersecurity. Um, artificial or augmented intelligence of how can that be deployed at interactive kiosks or interactive directories that we have um, that will just inform the passengers on this concourse, these are the restaurants that are open, you know, menus, um, just kind of elevating that instead of having a human person standing at that particular location in an information booth. So we're really keeping our eye on and how does augmented intelligence um, get placed into those um, and biometrics and then robots. I'm really excited that Cincinnati was able to do that, but there are some days in our terminals we cannot even see the carpet. We can't even imagine um, uh, deploying a robot, but where would that uh, where would the, be the right application in an airport setting? We've uh, yet to see our concessionaires um, roll out the robots on that, though I've seen it in all of our uh, university campuses in Phoenix, which is always very interesting. So Ray, are you, uh, you utilizing technology in order to um, improve accessibility um, for guests that might have disabilities and, and need additional capabilities from a self-service uh, perspective? Yeah, for the um, for ADA requirements, we have to you know provide options. So whether it's different uh, you know heights for interactivity, um, also being able to leverage. I guess this is another opportunity with the uh, with mobile devices, where being able to allow um, someone to use their mobile device to get through the steps, they may have the capabilities to um, uh, to complete those steps. Whether it's you know better visual or our hearing type um, capabilities on that mobile device. So allowing them to have that integrated experience to take advantage of that mobile device is something that we're constantly trying to improve. How about you, Roxanne, same question. Um, those are the technologies for us that we're often looking to, is how can we serve all of our passengers, whether it's visually impaired. Um, we have teamed up with ARIA to be able to have that in our airports, to um, sensory rooms. How are we able to serve all of the abilities of our passengers? And I really think for airports, um, we have taken on a greater role of that passenger experience. While yes, you can fly with your um, favorite air airline, but the majority of your time is in the airport operator's environment. So how do we find good partners that are able to do that? Who's willing to come in and do a pilot? Can we test that? Years ago, we were one of the first to put in the hearing loop system, which was really cost prohibitive because of the infrastructure and construction impacts. But as great partners have migrated and improved that, it's less of capital intensity. So really just looking at things of that nature of how can we for all of our um, passengers improve that experience. And HK? So for ADA requirements, as many of you know, hotels are one of the biggest um, advocate because as a hotel, we welcome everybody from a child to a senior to a uh, disabled person. So uh, not, uh, just going back to what Ray said, uh, where the kiosks are accessible to them. Also, hearing impaired, um, visually, in, visually impaired person, we need to make sure the kiosks are ready for them because it, uh, the last thing you want to have is a guest with this disability walk into your hotel and they cannot have a human to help them with and be um, very discouraging for, for a guest. So we, we want to make sure those kiosks are ready for those kind of challenges that are uh, within the industry. So on that note, uh, with technology, you know, we're seeing a lot of digital media and content being integrated into self-service solutions. I'm curious if each of you could kind of touch on what you feel is the role of digital content as far as um, interacting with your self-service solution and what the role is that it plays and how you guys are employing digital content delivery across the self-service innovations. So we'll start with you, HK. So digital content, uh, as far as hotel, I mean, hospitality industry, the marketing itself is a very big because as an industry, if you don't market your properties well, um, with kiosk, like Ray would be a very good partner uh, as an industry partner, 
that could market that these hotels are more on a self uh, service. Um, so, so it would be a partnering thing rather than you as in hotel marketing. So it would be more so of a partnership help that could help uh, market yourself. Roxanne, are you, are you guys employing any advertising, digital content across the different self-service innovations that you have today? So what we primarily market across, the kiosks in which um, we control, are um, the amenities for the passengers. So we'll talk about whether it's our uh, children's play areas, where those are located. Um, so it's all information um, at the fingertips for the passengers to really plan their journey. So where lounges, um, what restaurants are on those concourses. So we look at it that as if we're giving more information in in that perspective um, for it. The same thing that we do on our website is more information based. Again, just trying to make sure the passenger has all that information. We will promote our um, airport parking program, our parking reservation program, our Phoenix Reserve, which is a free service that you can sign up for your um, security checkpoint lane. So all the t try to give them all the tools for the passenger to make them be aware of it. So that's what our primary uh, concentration has been in the digital media. How about you, Ray? So we work with a lot of um, like resorts or, or family resorts. Um, so during that check-in process, we've worked with some of those um, those clients and their digital marketing groups to um, to implement um, uh, you know, marketing and advertising of of their resort and trying to gear things towards like upsells and upgrades, right? So maybe there's add-ons or certain packages that they want to offer. And so we'll work with the, the digital marketing groups to kind of have their look and feel, their design, and, and their, their messaging into the check-in flow at the kiosk to try to get that revenue generating uh, in place. Um, so in, interestingly, um, I share this story. I was, I was in Las Vegas, and on one of the large marquees of the, um, one of the resorts, it said, uh, now hiring uh, front desk staff, security, and hospitality. And in my mind, I was thinking, you know, that's probably all the same person when they hire them. So I'm curious, from your guys' perspective, how have the human capital roles changed now that uh, self-service is, is growing and um, absorbing some of those functions within the industries? Curious, how, how have roles changed um, for the for the humans that are that are interacting and working within your industries HK you want to start sure so as change of role it has been a big change specifically right after COVID uh, during COVID 90% of the hotels were pretty much either closed or not not maybe one or two rooms in a hotel so we couldn't afford to have the full staff that we used to. So what we had uh, adapted as the COVID was going on during the pandemic, that uh, front desk agent will do the greeting at the hotel, then they will check the person in, and also they will be the ones that will be cleaning up the breakfast area or setting up the breakfast, and it will be all in one package. And with the kiosk, it has l taken a little bit of the load off of those uh, people because now the check-in process is done through that. So it, it is a very helpful process. And we get more productivity out of our employees because if they're worn out with their overload of work, they're not going to be able to provide this customer service that's needed. So absolutely, it, it has been adapted very well. So Ray, in your Verdi deployments, have you seen a transition of kind of the traditional roles of hospitality staff? And can you touch on that? Yeah, from a couple of different aspects. Um, you know, one of the main goals of implementing technology, right, is to become more productive, right? Increase productivity. Um, and so at the same time, you can't just implement technology for technology's sake. So trying to integrate that technology into the operations, into the employees, um, processes, right, to help them become more productive is paramount. So they have to be able to understand what the technology is doing, adopt and adapt their processes to uh, to take advantage of that technology. So some of the roles do change. Um, we work with a wide range of, of hotels. Some are replacing a front desk. 
Um, and so trying to offer self-service technology and kiosks as the primary check-in process with augmenting um, staff when uh, remote assistance like assistance is needed and being able to um, you know, uh, support multiple properties with a, a smaller group of individuals. And so, um, yeah, we, we see a wide range. Uh, some properties just want to leverage technology to uh, enhance the guest experience, as I mentioned, to allow that guest to um, you know, go uh, much quicker to their rooms once they get to property. And so we'll see that, but you don't want to lose that hospitality, that human touch. So we'll see the, the, the um, let's say, the, the, the traditional front desk become more like guest experience managers. So they're actually greeting, asking questions, maybe making recommendations as that guest um, gets on property and not necessarily focusing on just checking them in, you know, checking their ID or anything like that that we can automate. And then from an airport, um, primarily where we're seeing the impact will be with our business partners, whether it's our food and beverage concessionaires, our retailers, and even our airline partners, because it is their human capital that is assisting on those kiosks. And so they have found that it's better to have those individuals um, out away from the desk. They will have other check-in agents that will finish the transaction if it's at the ticket counter where you have to drop the bag, but being able to assist guests if they have any questions or if the kiosk is not working correctly. Um, with COVID-19, like Neil had mentioned in the first session, there was a, a a massive push to implement self uh, self service uh, checkouts or even unattended retail and food and beverage just from a health and safety aspect of it. What I'm seeing with our partners is now is going back and how do we incorporate that and how do we integrate that so it's more of a seamless experience and not just a, hey, we had to get this out, of, out here just to be able to provide it. But also I think the key for them and what we're seeing um, just in the airport employee world is um, getting the human capitals buy-in. This is not a replacement. This is something to assist you um, in doing your job or even giving you um, the opportunity to use your skills in other areas. Because you were still going to need people that are going to need to assist uh, that guest that's just having some difficulty or asking questions about product. So it's really shifting the role of the employee base that's there. with passengers and activity um, that's taking place. So how best to utilize that employee is really um, in the focus. From an airport operator perspective, really in ours is having the skilled employee, um, employees to be able to put that infrastructure out there, support that infrastructure, and really help us select good vendors and technology partners for what our needs are. All right, so this is a... Uh... My last question for you guys on the panel, um, and this one obviously is near and dear to my heart as a uh, kiosk manufacturer and solution developer. I'm curious how you guys go about the process of selecting your technology partners and vendors. So when you're looking for a technology solution, some, what are some of the steps that you take and criteria you expect in a provider in order to help you make that choice and feel confident and uh, happy about your choice? And we'll start with you, Ray. Yeah, so at Verdi, we are actually a technology provider, but I'll go kind of into why um, and how I see our clients making those types of decisions. One is being able to have the expertise in the market. Can they, you know, can we actually implement and uh, integrate? We haven't really talked about some of the challenges, but one of the biggest challenges in hospitality for self-service and kiosks is the integrations into the, uh, uh, you know, the host into the hotel systems. So that, that technology stack is um, in different, uh, you know, there's different, a wide spectrum of, of modernization on that technology stack. Sometimes very legacy, the APIs aren't there. So can we actually implement and, and, and put that self-service check-in solution in place is one of the key, um, key aspects of tech, uh, you know, um, choosing your, your provider. 
One is, another one is security. Um, there's been some high profile uh, breaches and hacks um, in the hospitality industry. Um, so they become very public, they impact operations, and so they can be a challenge. So are you actually a provider that has a good security and cybersecurity um, implementation? And I'll, I'll hold on there. There's lots of other choices, but I'll just cover those two for now. HK, can you comment on that? Yes, so just as if you were hiring a human for your staffing, similar to that, you want to first look at experience. So when you want to, when you want to select a kiosk system, what is their background? How, is, how old is the company? What have they done in the past? How, how are their experiences with other uh, cu customer? That's one thing. And, and the other thing will be what Ray mentioned, security. Because as a kiosk, as a consumer, when you check in, you're opening your identity to a computer system and which could be breached. Just last year, IHG had a huge security breach, which caused a lot of data loss and a lot of money that was stolen. So that would be one of the biggest challenges, security is what we want to make sure when we select it, how secure is their platform. And obviously the third one is conveniency and how convenient is it for a customer. Easy process. That will be the main three things we would look for when we select a kiosk company. Uh, so uh, City of Phoenix actually owns uh, the airports, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, as well as our two, Deer Valley Airport and Goodyear Airport. So we're a government agency, so we have to be very transparent um, in our process. So there's generally a solicitation process for that. And so if I had one key giveaway for this group is to understand with government agencies, there's always going to need to be a transparency open process for it. We can't just pick somebody because we like that person better than the others. We have to have criteria for that. Um, we look at it in two buckets. We have our mature technologies. So our common use equipment, we really are looking for that experience of the vendor. Are they, other, are they operating in other peer airports, large hub airports? Um, because they've gotten that experience to understand that. We always look at um, our terms and conditions on the security and the data privacy will always be uh, portions of that. But we also look at emerging technologies and we approach that um, probably no different than our other peer airports. We look at opportunities of doing pilot programs. We're willing to do a test and let's let's pilot this. Um, through that process, we will often do something called a request for information on uh, an RFI that's out there to be able to come in for vendors to do demos so that we can ask questions about integration and um, infrastructure needs that's there. So we're kind of road testing it before we put it out to our public because we know trust of our public and our passengers is something that we have, but it can be easily lost if the technology doesn't work. So we look at those different ways um, in which to be able to do that. And we've often been very successful in the emerging technologies to come and do a pilot and uh, to understand um, that information that's there. So then, then we often will then expand that to the rest of the airport from a pilot program. Thanks. Uh, I think what I would add there too is in our experience, um, it's important to also consider uptime and support of the solutions, right? I, I think all of us could agree there's nothing more frustrating than coming to a kiosk or a self-service solution that's out of service or uh, out of order. So from our perspective and uh, from kiosk's perspective, um, you know, that's one of the areas that we really try to focus on is making sure that the, the kiosk is operational and running and working as designed. So uh, that's an area that I would, I would suggest you guys all also consider when you're deploying a self-service solution. We got a couple minutes left, so I was going to open it up to the audience for any questions. Um, I'm not sure. Yes, there's a microphone going around. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my question is for Roxanne. Um, you talked about the mission of Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport is to create seamless experiences um, for travelers. How can your partners, like your concessionaires, um, assist you in that journey? What should we be doing more of, um, or what should we start doing? 
Uh, thanks, Neil. I did not pay him to ask me that question. <laughs> uh, I think for us and uh, HMS host and Neil and your company do it very well is to bring us ideas. Um, one of the things that we have been working on um, in our strategic plan is really having um, our full digital strategy plan and is having those alignments uh, for that. And so we will look to our business partners. We're very transparent with them on like what we're doing, what's coming up, that information. And feeling that it's the same customer. My customer is their customer, the same thing for the airline. So how do we make that as seamless as possible? But come talk to us if you have a, a unique idea. Like I said, we are really great at piloting and trying some things and seeing if it will work. So a little small human lab um, for that. So um, as my grandmother used to say, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So if you if you don't mention it to us, uh, that would be great. The other thing that we do, I know I'm an odd person to be at a uh, innovation summit. We try to go outside of our industry to see what's taking place. Self-service kiosks has been around for um, a longer time uh, before it got into the airport. We see these at convenience stores. We see these at movie theaters. We see these at stadiums. So we as an airport industry on the back end of the hospitality or on the tail end of the hospitality really need to look to our hoteliers. What are they doing to improve that experience? Because really it comes down to whether you're in a hotel, an airport or a stadium, it's all about the experience for that individual um, for that. So how do, how do we make that as seamless as possible? Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, there's a couple over there in the back. Do we still have the microphone? Thanks. I, I actually didn't have a question. I just had a couple of comments, both for HK and Roxanne. Roxanne, your pun on having a pilot program at the airport was not lost at me. That was that was that's great. Um, and HK, uh, the, uh, actually, right here in Miami, one of my colleagues is at the. I don't know if you've seen the Citizen M Hotel downtown, and I think they kind of take that the idea of self checking at a hotel to a whole different level where everything about it is completely self -tubed. You get to choose your own room, you get to design your own room, you choose, you, the, the entire process is, is, is and, and the, the integration of it is, is just phenomenal. So I just thought. Thank, Thank you. you. So yeah. uh, my question was also for Roxanne. Sounds like you've had great success in using self-service and kiosks across the airport aviation scene. And I'm always interested in where they're not working and some of the issues. And you said they weren't really working well in the car rental industry. Could you kind of tell us a few ideas of why you didn't think they were working successfully and what the issues were? Oh, in that certainly. Area? Uh, so our thought was is that that's a touch point for passengers that maybe they could check in, uh, do their uh, seat selection, and all of that at our uh, consolidated rent a car facility, which is off airport, which now is connected by our SkyTrain, where previously you'd have to get on buses and it took you seven minutes to get to the airport. So our thought was, well, if they do that transaction there, then they can bypass going to the ticket counter um, kiosk to be able to do that. What we've noticed with our passenger behavior there, they just want to get to the terminal. Again, it's kind of that anxiety that that wasn't the right place for it. They wanted to get to the terminal because they knew they still had to go to the ticket counter to drop their bags. Um, so that was one where we still have them there. There's really low utility um, on them, but we really thought that that's probably not the best place for it. Um, so we, we did kind of learn that lesson. So we have a couple that are still there. The rest we call is more for inventory uh, to replace them for that. So we learned that lesson there. Okay, I think we are out of time. Uh, I would like to thank you. Um, my name is Jeremy DuPont. I'm the VP of Product and Marketing for Kiosk Information Systems. We are uh, exhibiting over here in the um, pavilion, so come by and talk to us if you have any, uh, any topics you want to chat around self-service and innovation, and we'd love to kind of discuss what, what you guys got going on and your insights. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, panel. Thank appreciate you, you guys. Thank you.